Hey, ladies. Hey. Hi. <laughs> Just, I've never done it this way before. It's telling me that I need to accept people, admit them as they're coming on. <laughs> Let's see. So we must be getting them. Um, Tom's not on it yet, is he? Do you know what I've just done? Because it's Sunday and we're going to Utah on Tuesday. I've been prepping and he's not here, is it? I need to make sure. Oh, I'm not going to tell you actually because I've just realised it's recording. <laughs> I'll tell you after. <laughs> Some record, so. Are you excited? Very excited. I know. Do you know what? He's so lovely, bless him. I messaged him and he was just like, I'm going on a tour, so it needs to be done this week. I'm like, oh, bless. And he's in Thailand. Oh, whereabouts? I'm not sure whereabouts he is. I've not even asked him that question. But I do know that he must be... Hang on, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Six hours in front of us. Yeah. Um, oh, some friends of mine are in Koh Samui at the moment. Oh, lovely. No, I would rather be there, thank you very much. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Wouldn't we all? <clears throat> oh, everyone's coming on quick. I wonder why but, I have to admit these, unless it's, do you think it's because it's five o'clock? They just... Possibly. <laughs> Ooh, whose shoulder is that? Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hi, yeah. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Everyone's oh, oh hi Sky, there's Sky. <laughs> I don't know if this is working. So Leanne, how did yeah. Nicholas cope with the uh delay on the aircraft? He was so good. He was okay. amazing. He was a good blessing last week. So good. Um, I hope you didn't mind me popping that bit of video on uh, Dream Team. No, that was amazing. Oh, it was gorgeous. I hope you've downloaded it and saved it. I have. Oh, I've saved it. It was such a special moment. I think I've set a trend off now, though, because everyone was messaging me saying they want to walk the stage with the kiddies. <laughs> why not? I know. I know. Get your why? Hey, most definitely. <laughs> definitely. But he, I think he... Um, he, I got my case out before to start my packing and he was he dead quiet in his bedroom and I thought he was playing and uh, when I went in he was packing, he come running in and he's like mama mama I need your help <laughs> and I went in and he started packing his case and he's saying what clothes shall I pack <laughs> <laughs> I was like you can't come this time to the holiday house um <laughs> I don't know whether or not you've invited Tessa Dunson. She's actually completed the task about five minutes ago. Okay, let me go on now. Uh, Tom, I'll just go and carry on. Let me just send Haley the. Oh, hang on. I'm trying to. I'm trying to admit people and send links to people. Multitasking's dangerous at the best of times. Nine for I know nine four two five eight three two six seven nine. Here's Tom, but we've not got hi Tom, we can we can see you here, but we've not got no there he is. There he is. I was gonna say we've not got um a picture. Yeah, I'm just gonna keep admitting these. What I'm gonna do, ladies, is I'm gonna meet everybody at step four. Oh. And we've still got a couple of people joining, so it is dead on five o'clock. So I'll give it, give it just another minute. We're all excited to hear from you, Tom. That's great. <laughs> Looking forward to it. I know look, everyone's waving. Can you actually believe we've got Big Al, the Big Al, on a Zoom call with us? How incredible is that? Right, still accepting. There's still people joining, so I'll just let them keep coming in. Are you okay if we just give them a minute? Be uh, Molly, my cat wants to come and say hello. Come on, Sam. Just give them a minute whilst everybody just jumps on, and then 
we'll get going. Okay. Right, what do you want to watch? Thomas. Thomas. And gum. Hang on. <laughs> Keep on there. I'm going to put it so we have speaker view as well. There's Tom. Okay, right. I think we can we can kick it off, can't we? Because if anyone jumps in, I can monitor it. So, ladies, thank you for all jumping on the Zoom. I know five o'clock on a Sunday is a little bit crazy, especially those who've got children and families at home. Um, but Tom, also known as Big Al, is actually over in Thailand, so it's practically 11 p.m. for him. Um, so we're super honoured that he has agreed to come and do this Zoom. Um, originally, obviously, we was planning on doing a live in the group. And then he said to me, I have to start having a look through the group. Let's do a Zoom. So then if anyone's got any questions for me, it's to face to face um, and I can answer. Um, and we kind of had a chat of like which way we wanted to take it. And obviously, we're aware that communication or that initial um starting a conversation with somebody new is quite frightening to people so um i'm not going to say any more we've all read his uh, his five questions so again well done for doing that with if that was my i decided to do as a little task to get in um, and he wanted us to read them questions as well because he said that his his zoom and his training tonight would make sense so i am gonna hand over and mute everybody apart from Tom and I'm going to put him on the big screen if it allows me to do it. Are you ready to go Tom? I think so. Yes, right. Let me put you on the, I'm going to mute my. Okay, can, uh, I cannot hear you anymore, but I hope everyone can hear me. I just want to say thanks for Leanne for setting up the call that and also getting everybody to take a look at that report because the first time you look at that, it's kind of strange. The second time it's gonna feel a lot better. So Leanne said we could be pretty direct tonight, even politically incorrect. So if there's anything I say uh, that offends you, it's Leanne's fault. No, just kidding. Uh, it, it's just an option. Look at this, it's just an option. But at some point, we have to get super serious about this business. And if this happens to be your point, uh, you'll like tonight. So let's talk about real life, not the company brochure, not the convention, but real life when you and I are out there talking to people who have their kids running around that aren't paying attention to us, that are worried about their budget, that don't want to try anything new, that hate to be a salesman, that are negative, have a salesman alarm, too good to be true filters. Uh, I hope that sounds like real life. So... Here's the situation. When I got started uh, 48 years ago, they failed to tell me something. They didn't tell me what kind of business I joined. So I thought I you know, joined like a skincare business. And it's not true. For everyone here on the call, let's offend everybody right away, uh, we're not in the skincare business. The company is, we're not. We're not making the stuff and putting in little lipstick holders. And we're not taking herbs in these rocks and trying it in the night with leprechauns. Uh, we don't do shipping and receiving. We don't do customer service. We don't do computer. We don't have a website. The company does it all. So the company can do everything perfectly well without us except one thing. And the only thing they can't do is get people to make a yes decision. Everything else they can do. So they partner with us and say, hey, guys, here's the deal. We'll do everything. We'll have a website. We have lawyers. We can pay taxes, all this stuff. All we want you to do is get people to make a yes decision so for everyone here the first thing that's going to change our life is we didn't even know what business we're in so no wonder things could get frustrating so if you want to put it in big letters just say you know i am in the decision making business and then circle the word decision underline it give it some arrows give it a shrine <laughs> but yeah we're in the decision making business and if this bothers you in any way, just ask yourself, well, what's the bonus in our compensation plan for people that almost joined? 
And how much commission do I get from uh, passing out samples of people that never buy? And what's the bonus on sending somebody to the website that never gets back to me? You say, oh, not much. So the only thing the company wants us to do is the only thing they pay us for, which is to get people to make a yes decision. So once we know that, we are ahead of about 95% of every network marketer has ever been in the business. We're not skincare consultants. Uh, we're not formulators. We are in the decision-making business. Cuppy does all that stuff for us. Awesome. So I didn't know this. So here's what happened. And if you've heard some stupid stuff recently, it's from stupid people 48 years ago who didn't know what's going on and people pass on bad advice. So I had some distributors to come to me and say, man, I just can't get anybody to join you. I, I'm talking to people. Nobody's interested. And I would say, just go out and get a hundred no's. They come back and say, it didn't work. And they say, if three no's hurt, why do I want 97 more? Because we didn't know we're in the decision business. So getting no's, we don't get paid for it. Well, then I'd say, well, uh, uh, gee, what am I going to tell them this time? Because I don't really know how to talk to people. So I said, well, um, uh, every no just gets you closer to another no because you're saying the wrong things. So that didn't work very good. Then they come back and they say, oh, I'm all discouraged and beat up. And I'd say, well, things like, oh, you can't say the wrong thing to the right person. Oh, trust me, you can. I run people on demand. I was terrible at it. And then they'd come back all beat up and say, well, oh, I'll give it another try. And I would say, well, you can't say the right thing to the wrong person. Wait a minute. Nobody's doomed for life. Somebody's going to say the right thing is going to change their life. Why can't it be us? And so we get all this miserable advice. And we take all this rejection because we don't know what's going on. And what's going on is we're in the decision-making business and we only get paid for yes decisions. So I hope nobody's offended by that because I, I know you read the book by my friends, Andrea, and you know, it says go for no. But if you read the book closely, what they're really saying is to push on, if somebody buys something, the story Richard tells is, you know, keep asking them if you want to buy more stuff till they say no. And I think that's a pretty good lesson. But I don't like rejection. I'm a full-time coward. So about uh, 46 years ago, I made a decision to do the entire business without rejection. So if you're shy and on the call here tonight, don't worry about a thing. You can do this business rejection free. And it's so easy that even men can do it. So let me show you what they taught us in the 1960s. Um, how many people here on the call remember the 1960s? And probably just the old people. So in the 1960s, it was only black and white. We didn't have color back then. This is what they taught us to do. Now you're gonna laugh till milk shoots out your nose. It's the stupidest thing in the world, but this is what they taught us to do in network marketing. So, get together and make a list of everybody, you know, hundreds and hundreds of people and call, 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 you know, beg for an appointment, you know, uh, you know send them messages, whatever you got to do. And if nobody sticks an appointment, then use the three foot rule. Talk to anybody within three feet. And if somebody finally says, I'll talk to you, then say, shut up and sit down for 45 minutes while I show you this company video and a third chart and tell you about the, you know, save your questions toward the end because I might cover it somewhere in my presentation. And then at the end, we would uh, harass them and make them feel guilty about objections and twist them against them. And we would close, close, close as hard as we could. If they didn't close, then we would harass them till they buy or die. And that was the sales techniques of the 1960s. Uh, anybody here see them recently? Yeah. So sometimes people are just way too pushy and they say just terrible things. So. What happened in 1997 is they made a little discovery. Brain science started working, and brain science is our friend. You don't have to know anything about brain science. This is a short version. But brain science measured in 1997 the brain waves of people and found out how people made decisions. Now, ask yourself this question. If you were to ask 100 people, how do you make decisions? A hundred people are going to say, I don't know, not sure, sort of a feeling. I uh, wait for lightning to strike, or little voices to talk in my ear, 
or roll some dice inside my head like a casino or 15,000 reasons for and 14,000 reasons against to avoid pain, get pleasure, some sort of hormonal flare up, some sort of emotional thing going on. Well, we just make stuff up. And none of that is true. So if you ask a hundred people how they make a decision, they're gonna say, I have no idea. Now, what if you and I knew how people made decisions? Let's put this together. Nobody knows how to make a decision. We will know exactly how it's done. How many people here see a license to print money? This could be awesome. And this is the frustrating part. New people come in and here's their business model. I have no idea what business I'm in. And if I didn't know, I have no idea how it works. And you can see where the frustration and all these calls and stuff come from, because we don't know what's going on. So people that are not on this call don't even know they're in a decision-making business. We're way ahead of them. And we're gonna learn a little bit how people make decisions. Here's what the brain waves showed. It showed that humans make instant decisions, instantly, based upon zero information. So you might wanna write that down. People make instant decisions based upon zero information. That's not a zip zilch, nothing. Now when they saw this, they said, oh, come on, that can't be true, I mean, what about sales presentations and demos and, no, people make instant decisions on zero information. And here's a, a brief overview. What happens is you and I have a conscious mind and have one thought at a time, which is what we're using right now. What part of our mind has to do everything else? Subconscious mind. So while you're watching this, your subconscious mind has to make a decision to pump blood over here, move this muscle, blink this eye, create 30,000 new digestive enzymes, don't fall off the chair, check the temperature if you need to sweat or not, listen to that noise outside, cause any problems. All these decisions are made without us thinking about it. They're automatic. So the way the human brain works is we can control one thought, Everything else is done automatically by our subconscious mind. Because we can't think fast enough. If we had to think for a decision, just think what would happen. Right now you'd be saying, well, okay, I probably should grab the pen. Where did I put the pen? Oh, and he said about, uh, about this decision thing, maybe I should start with the capital D. Oh, wait, wait, what about the shoes? Did I put the shoes away? What, oh, oh, wait, trying to make my heart beat again. Which ventricle to open first? How much nerve energy to each one? You know, we would die. We can't make our decisions because we would die. So the way the human mind is designed is we can have one thought and all of our decisions happen automatically. So in the last second, our minds have made 100,000 decisions just to keep alive. How much input do we have on it? Zero. So when you talk to prospects, if they can have one conscious thought and 100,000 decisions are being made automatically, what part of your brain do you think is making decisions? Yeah, the decision-making part of the brain is automatic. There's no thinking involved. And the reason we do this is so we can stay alive because we have to stop and think about stuff, we would die because there's too much to think about. Which is why when you and I talk to people, just on their conscious mind level, they have a whole bunch of decisions queuing up. <gasps> I got text messages, what about the kids? I gotta make that list, I gotta get back to that. And you want to take 20 minutes of my time while these decisions are queuing up? I don't think so. And so we understand the stress. People desperately want to sort us out, yes or no, like that every time. And if we do that for them, they are so happy. People make decisions instantly, and if the answer is yes, then they will give us more time for information. If the answer is no, they gotta get along with all the other things happening in their life. Now, since this is an important concept, I'll give you about uh, three, four minutes of examples here. Because once you switch and cross the line, everything will be different in your business. So watch this, for all the skeptics here. How many people here ever sit down with a prospect and the moment you sit down, the prospect's leaning back, folding their arms and frowning? Has that ever happened? Well, 
have they made a decision? Yeah. And what was their decision? No. Based on how much information? Zero. How many people here invited somebody on a call or opportunity meeting and they did not show up? Yeah. Well, have they made a decision? Yeah. What was their decision? No. Based on how much information? Zero. Uh, how many people here have seen a man with a remote control in front of a TV channel surfing? Click, 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 now, uh, before we get too smug, uh, let's talk about women. Uh, how many women here have ever been to a shoe store? All right, so you go down to the mall to the shoe store, you look inside a thousand pairs of shoes up on the wall, but next door, it's a shoe store going out of business with a 99% off sale. How long is your head on the first store? Boom. <laughs> Instantly to the next one, we made a final decision on a thousand pairs of shoes instantly to go to that next door. And we never asked the salesman, oh, please show me a pair of shoes, number one out of 1,000. Oh, they're Italian shoes. Great, made in Italy by a little old shoemaker. He lived up in the mountains. His son had a crutch. Oh, that's so nice. And they cut the hide out of the cow humanely and put some of our special skincare cream to help it heal. And we don't do that. Our decisions are boom and gone. And that's how the human mind works. So how many people here have ever looked at a video on YouTube? How many seconds into the video, before we make our final decision, if we want to watch that video or not? Three seconds, five seconds? Hmm. How many of us ever made a decision to go inside a restaurant and have a meal? Many times before we've even seen the menu. Ooh. Or how many of us have ordered off the menu before we had all the information? Were the vegetables organically grown? Did the chicken have a happy life before they killed it? And say, yeah, we do this all the time. So let me ask you a question. Based upon these examples, if I were to ask you, when do humans make their final decision? After the information or before, what would you say? So it doesn't sound so strange anymore. And this is why you and I get a telephone call from a salesman. How many seconds into that phone call before we've made our final decision to that salesperson? Boom. Now, if you and I make our final decision to a salesman, just like that, if that's what we do to salespeople, do you think other people would do that to us? What percentage of the time? Like over 100%. Yeah, they do it to us all the time. So let me just ask the ladies here. How many ladies here sometime in your lifetime met a young man, made up your mind about that young man, where that young man might fit in your life, and made that decision within the first 30 seconds of meeting that young man? No. Is that fair? We're going to go down to uh, Tesco grocery store, aisle four, shopping cart. So we're in aisle four. We look all the way down the aisle. We take our first step with our left foot. We look on the left, we see a box of cornflakes. In our mind, we go, oh, cornflakes. I wonder if they have a company video. Tell me about the company founder. Uh, are the cornflakes natural, international, supernatural? Oh, I wonder what kind of warehousing. Do they win any awards lately? Is that how we shop for food? No. We go down that aisle saying, no, 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 no. Donuts, yes. No, 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 no. Bottle of wine, yes. No, 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 no. We have already made our final decision about every item in that aisle. No information needed. So the next time you go grocery shopping, think about that. Most of our purchases, automatic. 
So I hope everybody is 100% in because now we have to start doing a ninja trick to make this thing pay off. For those that are just starting network marketing, there's 25 little skills to learn. Closing is one. We're not doing any of the skills here tonight. We're just doing a ninja trick that you can earn money while you learn the skills in your own time. So this ninja trick you can use from the moment you hang up, and it'll be awesome. So the first thing I'd like you to write down on a piece of paper is people make decisions instantly on no information. All right, I got that. Here's the next part. The purpose of business is to solve people's problems. If people never got hungry, having a restaurant would be stupid. If people never got sleepy, having a hotel would be dumb. If people's skin looked good forever, selling skincare would be bankruptcy. So the only reason for business to exist is to solve people's problems. So, oh, okay, got that. So, in conversation, here is what you and I are going to do. We're not going to be a sleazy salesman like uh, there used to be a, in New York City, like a salesman with a giant suit coat. And when people walked by, he'd open a suit coat and say, hey, you see these watches? They're almost real. Want to buy a watch? We don't want to look like that. We don't want to go out and push our deal, push our products, push our comp plan, push our opportunity on people. That's selling, that's pushy, we feel sleazy, instinctively we know that's wrong, but we just don't know how to fix it. And you feel that when you're talking to people. So that's called solution pushing. We have a solution, we just, you know, I got the business, I need to tell everybody about it, here's my solution. And we feel sleazy about that. But what if we were a problem solver? Ah, people welcome problem solvers. And how we're gonna solve their problem is with our solution, of course. And we're gonna do it in such a nice way where all we are presenting to them is one more option in their lives. So people love having extra options in their life. So a new presenter gets started, say, hey, hey, all you do is give people one more option in their life. That's it. They can take the option today, tomorrow, never, you know, that's up to them. All we do is offer people one more option in their life. They don't jump off a cliff if they don't want it. It's just one more option that's not live or die, not uh, yes or no. It's just here's the option. And we do it when they have a problem, this option would help. Now, think about this. If you had a problem and somebody came to you and offered you one more option that might help with your problem, you'd feel pretty good about it. Especially if they say, you know, it's up to you. So, Let's see how this sounds in real life. Uh, is it, uh, I hope it's okay. I'm gonna use some massive exaggerations. You'd never go this far. But the reason I use the exaggeration is it's a good learning technique. It's easier to remember the example. So please don't go this far. So, talking to a friend at work, you might uh, just mention a problem they have. Maybe it came up in conversation or maybe it's just so common you know they have it. So how about this? Well, you might say, hey, are you tired of laying in bed at night listening to your skin wrinkle? Obviously an exaggeration. And the friend's going to say, yeah, that wrinkling sound keeps me awake for a long time. So, well, would it be okay if we had a special cream that would stop it? Yeah. Done. So you're standing commuting on the way to work and you're in London by the tube, and you talk to somebody and you say, hate commuting, problem, right? Do you hate commuting? They say, oh man, I'm here smelling people's armpits 45 minutes every day, back and forth, it's terrible. Well, would it be okay if they could work out of your home instead? Yeah, done. Hate your job? Oh man, I, that drink-sucking vampire boss is taking little bits of my brain out every day, turning me into a human zombie. Hmm. Would it be okay if you and I went in business together so you could be your own boss? Yeah. Like looking good when you leave the house? Sure. Would it be okay if you had a coordinated look instead of looking like you graduated from the clown school of makeup? Yeah. 
you like lipstick? Sure. But would it be okay if it stayed on your lips instead of rubbing off on glasses and shirt collars? Oh, yeah. Eight false eyelashes, of course. Would it be okay if your natural lashes were longer and looked better? <laughs> sure. Anybody if you're picking up a trend? Here's what we're doing. The first question, text if they have a problem. The second question, ask, do you want to fix the problem or not? Now, some people don't want to fix their problems. I've talked to several elderly lady about health, and they say, oh, no, I don't want to get better. My children visit me more when I pretend to be sick. And maybe you might run across people say, oh, wrinkles give me character. All right, that's okay. But the point is, the first sentence is checking for a problem. The second question that we use there, checks if they want to fix it or not. If they want to fix it, done. The decision's been made, just, you know, fill in the details. Now, I gave you some examples, and they say, well, that sounds pretty easy, but, you know, I had a little bit more practice than you have. So let's break one down, and I'll show you the ninja trick. So first we pick a problem they're probably going to have. So let's imagine a teenager with acne. You're going to say, do you hate acne? What do you think they're going to say? Yeah, totally hate acne. And then we're going to ask them, would it be okay if you tried something new to fix it? And they're going to say, yeah. Now, I'm going to ask you to write down some five-word phrases. Here's the first one. Now, I want you to feel the back of your mind. I come up to you, and I want you to feel if it's a yes or a no. Just feel if it's a yes or no. Uh, what if I say, trust me, I'm an American? You say, boom, that was over just like that. That's a no. It was easy, right? So we understand how quick we make decisions. And that's why we make decisions on the fashions, uh, politics, everything. Now feel this one. This is an important one. I come up to you as a salesperson, and I say five words. Would you be interested in? Now, when I say, would you be interested in? If you're like most people, the back of your mind is screaming, salesman, salesman, dive, Scotty, dive, shields up, salesman approaching, run, run, save yourself, hide your wallet, hide your purse. Sounds like a salesman, and that's your subconscious mind saying, we've heard that before, and it didn't end well, we got this one, stay away. So if you start your conversation with, would you be interested in, you literally push people away. Now, we didn't know this, and we said this with the best intention, but brain science shows us if we say, would you be interested in? And we do this with the best intention, be nice, don't be pushy on them, we push people away. So learning the skills in network marketing is not only learning what to say, but it's also learning what not to say. So if you are like me, and I've used, would you be interested in? Stop. You keep using it, you're gonna keep your full-time job forever. How, how many people here are shocked that, you know, ooh, didn't know about this. So maybe try this. I'm your worthless brother-in-law. I come up to you and say, hey, what's new? And you say, oh, man, I can't tell him about my business because he might join. He'd ruin it for everybody. How can I keep my worthless brother-in-law away? And you say to me, would you be interested in looking at my business? And, of course, I'm going to say, no, no, no. And you're saved. So if you want to get rid of somebody, what are we going to say? Would you be interested in? Simple as that. So maybe let's try this five words. Because the brain makes a decision like that. What if I said, I'm your worthless brother-in-law. I come up to you and I say, I just got involved with. How many people feel the no already? You're thinking, this is going to be terrible. It's going to cost me money. Oh, no, it's going to last forever. I'm out of here. And we're going to say things like, i got to think it over. I don't have time right now. Anything to get rid of me. So five words are dead. Nobody told us this. And we're out there doing a 20-minute talk or presentation. We were dead at the 10-second mark. Nobody told us, but this is how it works. 
And Leanne said it's okay to be straight about it. Now, you should be suitably depressed. A lot of the words we are using right now is killing us. So would it be okay if I gave you five words that worked? And would it be okay if these five words got our prospects to say yes immediately? So would it be okay if we learn them right now? Would it be okay if we wrote them down? Would it be okay if I just keep saying would it be okay if until you finally write down would it be okay if? Now please circle this. You might even write it on the inside of your wrist. This is probably one of the best of the magic word sequences. There's a whole bunch of magic words we can say at another time, but listen to would it be okay if. When you say would it be okay if, the back of the human mind does this. Instantly, it has a program, and it's one of the most stupidest programs ever given to humanity. But if we say would it be okay if, the back of the mind goes, yes, 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 high five, totally there, yes, don't even know what it's gonna be, but yes, yes, yes. It's insanely stupid. So if you say, would it be okay if, your chances of success go through the roof. And you might be thinking, all right, he's American, went too far, too much hype, I understand that. So for all the skeptics here, would it be okay if I gave you some cool examples? And we're all thinking, yeah, yeah that was a good one. Would it be okay if I gave you even more good examples? So listen to these examples. I'll just do some for opportunity first. Feel how quick this decision happens. Would it be okay if you had an extra paycheck? Would it be okay if you could pay for Christmas with cash instead of credit card? Would it be okay if you could stay home with your children and still get a full-time paycheck? Would it be okay if you could fire the boss? Would it be okay if you could retire 10 years early at full pay? Would it be okay if you worked three weeks of the month you paid for four? Would it be okay if you had a five-day weekend instead of two? Would it be okay if you never had to show up for work again? Would it be okay if you earned more money part-time than your boss did full-time? Would it be okay if your lipstick stayed on your lips instead of shirt collars and glasses? So when you say, would it be okay if, they naturally want to say yes, unless it's so unreasonable. So here's my question to you and kind of check to see if we're all on the same speed here. If you met me and you wanted me on your team, when it came to the second question, the closing question, because that's when people close, what five words would you choose if you talked to me? Would it be okay if? So, if you want somebody to say yes to your closing question, simply start it with, would it be okay if? Now, listen to these again, then I'll give you a third closing sentence on top of it. Now that you know what the ninja trick is, I said, you like lipstick? Yeah. Would it be okay if it stayed on your lips instead of glasses and shirt collars? Yeah. Or... Uh, like long lashes? Yeah. Would it be okay if I showed you a 3D mascara so you never have to wear false eyelashes again? Yeah. Or you find warehousing your babies in daycare kind of sad? Yeah. Would it be okay if I show you how to work out of your home instead? Yeah. Do you hate this job as much as I do? Yeah. Would it be okay if we had a cup of tea with Leanne and she could give us an escape plan? Ooh, yeah. Do you like taking good care of your skin? That applies to everybody. You like taking good care of your skin. What are we gonna say next? Would it be okay if I showed you a cool way of doing it? Rush in the morning to put on makeup? Would it be okay if I showed you a five minute routine that works like the charm? I said, wow, this is not hard. So you can make hundreds of these once we understand that the decision is instant, it's before any information happens. And if the answer is no, we're done, save two people's lives. If the answer is yes, we can continue. So you're thinking, how do I continue? Let me give you a little ninja third sentence to say. 
We want them to move forward like now. So, let's do the lipstick. Uh, like lipstick? Yeah. Would it be okay if your lipstick stayed on your lips instead of shirt collars and glasses? Yeah. But let's fix that now. Right, right down, let's fix that now. And it moves them forward. Now that's sort of Texan, let's fix that now. Let's do a English version. Uh, like lipstick? Yeah, would it be okay if it stayed on your lips instead of collars and glasses? Yeah. But let's get that sorted. Very English. Let's get that sorted. Or let's sort that out now. And that just moves. It's like, well, what? Well, let's get you a couple different colors so you can enjoy it right away. Now, if anybody has one of these little um, uh, iPhone stopwatch programs alarm, Let's see how long this takes in real life. But, so if you have one of these, you can check it. And I'll just guesstimate because I can't multitask at all. But you can go and time it later if you want. But let's see how long this took beginning to end. Ready? I, um, you like this stick? Yeah. Would it be okay if it stayed on your lips instead of Shirts and glasses. Well, sure. Well, let's fix that now. I'm guessing about six and a half seconds. That's a guess. I didn't time it. Let's say seven seconds. Seven seconds we have done our entire clothes, which is our job. And now the company provides us with you know, all kind of stuff they can look at for information. Seven seconds. Now, uh, I'm not a mind reader, but I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, seven seconds? I could do this twice a day. Maybe three. So that's the ninja trick. Problem? Would it be okay if you fixed it? If the answer is yes, let's sort it out now. In about seven seconds, you're done. And people say, Wow, all the rest is just like details. And here's what happens when you do the details. Because you've already made the yes decision, you don't have all these objections and people looking for reasons why not. They're looking for reasons why. Uh, they're more helpful and there's no rejection. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, 40 minutes. Uh, let's turn it open for questions because I could talk for days about the skills. We didn't even get to the first one yet, but at least we know something about <laughs> closing. <laughs> No, it's been amazing. What I've done is some of the girls have been asking questions, so I've wrote them down for you. So it's kind of, I think some of them have kind of been answered, but Tessa asked, um, she's struggling even to get no's um, at the minute because she doesn't seem to be connecting. Um, have you any pearls of wisdom in relation to that? Okay, you have the five questions in people's minds. Question number one was personal development. We can't do anything about it. Question number two, can I trust you? So if nobody trusts you, you, you've got a problem. There's some skills we have to learn. And the skills of learning how to get people to trust us is not that difficult, but it's a huge deal. It's the biggest question of all. But number three is what's happening here. Number three is, are you interesting? Now, in this little ninja trick, I'm assuming most people are getting started. I talk to people right now, so they've got one and two taken care of. But in this ninja trick, are you interested? That's the third question. Now they're going to say, wait, you're talking about me, my favorite topic now, <laughs> and you're talking about my problems. We are the most interesting person in the world. I compare that to say, now I want to show you my new district collection or something. Now we are the least interesting person in the world. So everything will change if you go with problem first, because you're talking about them, and then you're interesting because you're, you're talking about their problems. And then the next step, number four, is closing. If you saw those five questions, they say, wow, it doesn't take long to get through there. Not at all. And then, of course, number five is the presentation. Uh, here's a situation. When you're one-on-one -on -one talking with people, you need to get to it right away. Uh, I'll tell a story about uh, Facebook in Australia. It's, I don't know how, how you want to take this, but 
uh, when I first heard about the uh, unique, and I was in Australia, and there's some of the leaders said, yeah, come and uh, talk about it. I said, well, I better find out what it is. So I went on and looked at a, uh, what do you call it, the Facebook Live. Now, I'm not a Facebook Live fan. I don't get on Facebook very much, but here was it, and let's see if we all can diagnose the problem. Okay. Hi, 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 glad everybody uh, uh, sent my invitation. Now, a lot of people aren't here yet, so we're gonna wait five or six minutes before we get started. Let me adjust the camera for a while. How's the lighting over here? And I think we missed the first six or seven seconds where it's yeah. over. And most of you are gonna see it on replay anyway, so I suggested, you know, I wanna get to the point a little bit earlier, but every new presenter blows the first 10 seconds when it all happens because we didn't tell them. But now we can tell them and say, uh, try to get to the point really quick because people have this avalanche of tsunami of decisions to make and they just want to sort us out so they get on to the next one. That's why they're so stressed and cutting us off. They're not being rude, they're just suffering from all these decisions piling up. So what's happening is we're not very interesting. Trust me, they would listen to you if you said, I have your children. I would listen to us. <laughs> What's the next one? It definitely makes sense. Okay, so a couple of people have asked this one. Do you find the old school way of in-person, face-to-face works best when you come to speak to somebody about the opportunity? Because obviously being a social media-based, multi-level marketing company, a lot of things that we do is via messages, Facebook comments, Messenger, etc. So a lot of it is online. Okay, there's uh, six levels of communication, here they are. The worst one is uh, text, an email, a Facebook message. You can't underline, you can't bold, easily misunderstood, very short. And you're talking at people one way. Uh, the second level is like a website, they can have like moving graphics, but they're still talking at people. You send them to a website, they're being talked to, talked to. Level three, it starts changing. There's two-way communication. This is where stuff happens. And that's what the phone call. Level four is like a Skype or Facebook call. You can actually uh, see the body language, see them roll their eyes, hear them sigh when you go on too long. Uh, level five is be somebody in person. That's why when you go to a convention, you meet somebody, ah, oh, I think I love you because you know, I figured on the calls. And level six is meeting somebody over food. Now, I made a career of meeting people over food. I would sit down, spend about 10 seconds, they say yes, and I would casually chit chat about the rest of the presentation. So, if you insist at doing it at level one communication, now it's gonna be a struggle, a real struggle. Uh, it's gonna be misunderstood, there's all kinds of things go wrong, they're not paying attention. So, the first thing we wanna do is always talk to the highest level of communication possible which means it might only be Facebook. Okay. Uh, if you meet somebody in person and you send them back to a Facebook or a website, level one or two, that's where you want to poke your eyes out. And it doesn't make any sense. So if you're on Facebook, the first thing you want to do is get them off Facebook and talk to them on the phone. You say, well, how am I going to do that? Well, I guess we're going to have to be interesting, aren't we? So, <laughs> Here's, a, I'll give you an exact script. And I can't tell you how to do the story because we don't have time tonight, but this, the exact script is, I got a good story, period. I got a good story. Now, stories are crack cocaine to the human mind. We cannot go on in life until we know how the story ends. Children age two, mommy, daddy, tell me a story. It goes on and on. But you say, I got a good story, period. Tell you, not text you, tell you, when we have a chance to catch up and talk, our text. Tell you when we have a chance to catch up and talk. Now, if you send out three of those texts in the morning to people on contact list, you're probably gonna have two or three people call you. I'm at the gym, call me in 10 minutes, let's talk tomorrow, let's meet for lunch. It's like, hey, so we can upgrade them by learning specific sequences of words, just like you did here with our, would it be okay? So, yeah, we want to get them off, and that's one way of doing it. Okay. Um, 
and then somebody said obviously I think a lot of us hide behind the Facebook and social media because they're scared of rejection um it's so all right <laughs> That's just something that kind of we have to all overcome. Um, all right, well, uh, let's put it this way. I am so scared of rejection. I, I have no idea how to overcome. And I said, rather than work and overcome it, let, let's work on talking to people where there wouldn't be any anyway. Yes. So think about this. And I know some of you say, well, I don't want to talk to people because they're going to ask me questions. Well, they're going to ask negative questions to you if you pitch them. They're going to ask positive questions of you if they made a yes decision. So I will give you 21 words to do a presentation over the phone. Are you ready? Now, I can't tell you why these words work, but they will. The first thing you're going to say is, what would you like to know first? And then answer the question as short as humanly possible. Then ask, what would you like to know next? Over and over again until they run out of questions. Most people guess out of three or four or two. And then finally say, what would you like to do next? Now there's, um, if you read the book, The One Minute Presentation, there's that, that presentation in the back, it explains how to do it, and explains why those specific words work and what happens in the back of your mind. But the point is, you don't have to be intimidated. You can be shy. And here's the conversation. I call it and say, yeah, yeah, I, I'd like to uh, pay for Christmas with okay. You say, well, what do you like to know first? And well, well, what I have to do is says, well, you're on Facebook uh, every night. You might as well get paid for it. Whoa, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what do you like to go next? Well, well, what do I do? Well, you're on Facebook. You put on a little makeup. People watch you, and they go in order. Really? Yeah. And then you make money. Okay. You get paid, like, pretty quick. Wow, that's pretty awesome. What do you like to go next? Uh, um, uh, 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 yes, that's it. Uh, well, what do you like to do next? I guess I'd like to go online and see some videos and find out how to do this with you. That's just going to be your conversation. Okay. If you pitch people, the conversation is, ah, it's not about the company that has any bad reviews or something like that on Facebook. Yeah, it's just awful. Perfect. My advice is avoid rejection. It's a bad, bad thing. Okay. And last question, because I know it's really late there and we'll let you get going. But um, somebody has asked, where do you stand on how long to build a relationship before you actually go in with your question one, which I'm guessing is the one okay. we've talked over tonight. So it's just about that relationship building first, hot, warm, cold markets, etc. Well, it depends on the people. It might depend if they're angry. But uh, you leave here at Tesco, you have to check out counter. And uh, you say to the clerk, love your job? No, I hate this job. Well, would it be okay if you had a different career? Yeah, well, let's fix that. So what do you mean? Give me your phone number. We'll, we'll talk when you have a break or next time I'm there. Perfect. How much relationship do you need? Yeah. I love that one. If you're, if you're super interesting, I mean, uh, the report comes right with it. Perfect. Perfect. Men can do this. Remember, men can do this. It can't be hard. Everybody. Okay, so I love that. Give me your phone number. <laughs> Let's talk. Okay, perfect. Everybody, the feedback has been absolutely amazing, Tom. Thank you so, so much for taking the time out for joining us. I've literally like got pages of notes. I'm sure everybody else has been sat like writing away. <laughs> so lots and lots of value and the comments are absolutely brilliant. So many light bulbs going off. Thank you. Amazing. So grateful. Thank you so much for taking the time out. Thank you, Tom. You were brilliant. You're amazing. <laughs> so you kind and of, thanks they're coming thanks in for setting out that report to the group ahead of time. That, that really helps because the second time you hear it, it's not so strange and it really makes us go faster. Yes. So, so thanks yes. for doing that. Definitely. Perfect. Thank you, everybody, as well, for jumping on on a Sunday. I'll let everybody get back to your families and you to bed Tom <laughs> but yeah it's all been right. an amazing experience thank you all so much I will speak to you all soon see you all when I get to the UK bye 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 Bye. That's a thought as well, just for those who are on. Tom is going to be in the UK touring soon, so I'll make sure that we've all got the workshop dates available. <laughs> and he, he is at MMC as well in November, I believe. 
what? He's going to the MMC. That's great. <laughs> yes, he's at MMC in November. So he is an amazing yeah. man. He is. He's an absolute legend. Bless so him. much of that just kind of made sense. You just kind of go. Definitely. Wow. Yeah, okay. I got my light bulb moment. Yeah, a few of them <laughs> few of them went off myself. I was just kind of going, Wow, okay, that makes so much more sense. Perfect. <laughs> I'm so glad. Uh, let, let me I do can I start this record? I've got Thank you, Leanne. <laughs> You're welcome.